Welcome to Stager Savvy, insider secrets to stage your home and sell it for more. My name is Stephanie. This is the podcast where we bring you the latest tips, tricks, and expert insights from the world of professional staging. And I'm joined by my friend and fellow staging expert, Candace. Hi, everyone. We may be competitors in the Denver market, but we believe in abundance and collaboration over competition. And we're here to share our collective knowledge with you. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from the experts. This is Stager Savvy. Hi, Candace. Hi, Steph, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Great, I'm excited about today's podcast. Right, it's gonna be good. Today we're talking about curb appeal. So many things to talk about with that. I mean, it's so important. I I always tell my clients it's it's their second chance to make a first impression because they've the photos are what get people there, but the curb appeal is what actually gets them inside. If they drive up and it looks terrible, they're going to be like, "Mm -hmm, maybe not. Let's continue. So first picture. It's right. Always the first picture is the front of the house. That's right. So that's a big first impression. You really, really want to capture them in that yeah. first seconds when they see that picture. Agree. So yeah, I we spend quite a bit of time outside on my consultations because I, awesome. I want them to understand that. I want them to, to know that it really needs to look great from the outside. Yeah, the inside is super important too, but it's it's that we get them in the door. We got to get them in the door. So what where do you start with with your clients with curb appeal? Uh, with my clients, I take them all the way across the street so that we can look back at their house and get the full view of it. Yes, I love and, that. And then we start talking about what buyers are looking at when they look at that first picture. Yep, that's great. I like to sometimes we'll have them if they have their phones with them, have them take a picture from yeah. across the street because everything looks so different, so you know, different. on a, on a photo. And then they can actually see it objectively and be like, oh yeah, that mulch looks terrible or whatever. And they're, they're able to see it a little bit more as a buyer would when it's on a photo, I think. So that's kind of fun too. Great tip. Yeah. Um, okay. So from across the street, are you giving tips or do you come back to the house and then start talking about what they need to oh, do? No, we spend time across the street talking over all these things that they may or may not have to do. Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about today are the different things that we touch that's on. That's right. What are some of the things? The <laughs> so yeah. What, what's right. one of the first things you look for? Um, I think the first thing I look at is the driveway and the sidewalk. Like I, it needs to be swept or, or blown or whatever. So there's no leaves and there's not dirt all over the place and I'm looking for weeds in the cracks and right. things like that. Just making sure the driveway itself looks clean and fresh and nice yeah. and the sidewalk. In the spring and fall, we have what we, what I call bo- booger season <laughs> we're in right now where the stuff is falling from the trees and it's yes. everywhere booger season. So booger season. definitely want all of that, uh, cleaned off. Yeah. Good. What else? What do you tell your people? Um, well, I, I really help them focus on what the buyer is going to be looking at first, which is they're going to be looking for color. So their hmm. eyes are going to be drawn to color. And yep. if you don't have any color for them, then they're, they don't have a place to focus their eyes right off the bat. So they'll look for color and then they'll look for the details. So I love having them put some bright colored pots on either side of the door, or a, I always love a bright, cheery doormat. Mm, and, yes. You know, in Colorado, we can't have flowers all year long, like we can in other States. So um, right. even if they have the bright colored pots with nothing in it, that makes a difference. So they have their eyes can focus on that front door, which is right. really important spot. There's at least some color drawing their eyes to yeah. the front door. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Agree. Um, like a good tall teal pot. Oh, I just love those. Blues are so good right now. I love all the blues. A great the place for those at home. I just saw 
thousands of pots there. So, and they're hey. not too expensive. So if you're All right, go shopping, people, get some pots. <laughs> nice. So, what about uh, you? Um, let's see. So after I talk about the driveway with them, I'm usually looking at the yard and we talk about, um, keeping the grass mowed and trimmed and weeded, making sure that always looks as nice as possible. And then also, um, their mulch, if they have mulch, yes, fresh mulch always. And I, and I That's tell really them to save good. that. Yeah tell them to save that for like just a couple of days before pictures. Like don't do that at the beginning of the month. If pictures aren't for three weeks, like do it right before. Cause it, if we want it to look fresh and nice and, and good. So I've that stuff these days is um, a focus on like the black mulch. Have yes. Seen- I love the black mulch. Seeing a lot of black mulch. And I prefer that over like the red, red red mulch red yeah energy look rust colored I, i'm not a huge fan of that agree i love the black mulch and that's usually it's like usually what i recommend too yeah black mulch go get yourself some black mulch it's good and it looks good it just looks it has that contrast with the grass and exactly. flowers it just natural. looks i like it just looks sharp mulch too you know but but not the orangey ready right no no oranges and reddies None of that. Then I'm sure you have them edge their lawn as best they can and make sure they you know, everything looks clean and neat and trimmed. Yep. I have them remove all of their lawn equipment or lawn, whether it's, whether it's gnomes or uh, flags, little sticks in the ground with butterflies, with spinners or whatever, like if it's, I, I tell them if it's not natural, people don't need to see it because it it's reflecting their style. It's kind of like art where it's showing the people who it's live like, there. Yeah, it's personal. Yeah, it's personal. No, exactly. Personal. What's your thoughts on a um, American flag? I get asked this quite a bit. I yeah, I do too. Everybody, everybody. Well, I, a lot of people have them, yeah. and they they do always ask, "Is it okay?" and I always have them leave them up. Oh, I do. I'm like, we live in America. Right. If there's anybody here that has a problem with that, then yeah. I, think I don't know. Me, it's more about where the flag is hanging and, you know, how big the flag is. Sure, sure. I kind of feel like it's a bit of a distraction in photos. So I, a lot of times I just tell them to just not put it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it depends for sure. That's what we really want to accomplish in this first photo of the front of the house is less distractions. And so when you've right. got your hose piled up over on this side and over here, the hose in the garage, your, your little flag of the whatever. So in those photos, buyers are distracted by those little things that are in the pictures. And so they're not actually focused on the house and that great first picture. Yep. Yeah. I could totally see that for sure. That's a good point. I think, I think it does. I think it depends where it is, how big it is, what it's, you know, how, if it is distracting or not, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Good thought. I wouldn't have. Something else I always recommend. And I find a lot lately is people need new numbers on their doors. Yes. Or on their garage or whatever. Yes. And there's just some old, small kind of short numbers. And it's such an easy way to modernize the whole front of the house that and light fixtures, they kind of go together in my book. I I usually recommend new ones for both. If they need one or the other, it's black. black. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Black. Get black numbers and black light fixtures. And it just modern number that's a little bigger oh I think that makes such a huge difference freshens the whole front of it up it looks so good really yeah 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 Yeah. do it get the new house numbers numbers. get rid of the gold numbers they don't really Mm. stand out they don't look good in pictures so right I'm all about the black numbers yeah they're hard to see I mean I guess unless you have really dark dark paint but yeah case by case but 
you know. <laughs> case by case. What else do we um, see? So we talked about lighting, updating your lighting really yes. not expensive and it really is not very difficult to do even if you you know wanted to hire a handyman or electrician to put that in for you yeah really not difficult but it really changes the look of the outside of the house and modernizes it instantly yes. yeah it's going to make a big difference i think i mean i don't know if there's stats on the return on investment on outdoor light fixtures it's gotta be big but it's got yeah it's gotta be big right i mean it it just it's again that first impression it looks fresh nothing is looking dated right when people are walking up to the house that's the key it just looks fresh and new and and good so i think yeah. one of the things that stephanie and i both recommend to our clients is a black door Ooh, i yes. love how a black door looks now i'm not opposed to bright colored teal door in the right house or a right. bright orange door or yellow door but those are really more personalized color choices rather mm -hmm. than door and they say a black door gives you six percent more was it six percent or six thousand more I thought it was six thousand dollars thousand more yes but regardless like it's six thousand it's gonna get you more money and I think sure. I mean people ask me like really a black front door I'm like yeah I think it feels stately and it just makes the house feel a little more sophisticated i don't know it just posted about that actually Did <laughs> you? tomorrow nice yeah it's a good stat. very good yeah it is a good stat mm -hmm. yeah what else so we talked weeds we talked mowing the grass water of course fertilize if you need to um you don't want to come to oh see your lawn that is full of weeds and has a lot of dead spots in it that just doesn't bring like that emotion to them wanting to move in that says to them oh my right. god you're gonna have to work on this exactly we need to have all the work done right people want move in ready we say it all the time but yeah move in ready let's talk about all the little spider webs and creepy crawlies around the garage door around the front door right they love to collect their birds nests whatever it is power wash yes. the front of the house get the garage the corners around the door, around the windows, all of that stuff should be power washed and fresh and clean. So there's no spider webs and no yucky, no dust and dirt and grime or any of that stuff on mm -hmm. the front of the house. Yeah. And windows go along with that. Do you want to talk about windows? Definitely. Oh, I always recommend clean windows. It, it's yeah. not only on the outside, but in, from the inside, clean windows make a house feel lighter and brighter and fresher. Yes. Um, and then in the, on the outside, we often recommend they don't put their screens back in because the photo photography of those windows without screens just looks so great and shiny and um, oh, makes a huge yeah. Looks so much better. The same thing, don't you, Stephanie, with your screens or tell people to take their yeah. screens? Yeah, pull them off. off. Yeah. yeah, photographs better. For sure. Yeah, it's good. Um... Let's so see. Oh, I, we should talk about trees and bushes and stuff. Of course, you would want that to be, um, you know, neat and tidy. So trim up your your hedges and limb up your trees. If your tree is taking over half of the front of your house, that's not necessarily right. a good thing. So limb up those trees so that you know you can actually see the house. So that makes a huge. Yeah. Difference. I had a I had a client For one sure. time. They had a huge hedge in front of their um sitting area like front porch area this yeah, massive yeah. hedge it went so far up you couldn't see any of the windows in the front of the house oh no so that's one thing people want to see the front of the house they don't want to see necessarily right. the, bushes, the trees and stuff but i recommended it they didn't do it so the photos don't even show the little sitting area, sitting area in the front of the house which because the trees are blocking it yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that's part of what's capturing emotion for people as they walk up is this little seating area and how they can see enjoying the front of their house. For sure. Well, let's talk about that a welcoming front porch area, right? Some kind of sitting area bench or a couple of chairs and a table, whatever. But something that's 
welcoming, like, oh, we could sit here on the front porch and drink our tea every morning or whatever. But that's so important for buyers to, as they're walking up to, to have that sitting, sitting area that sort of welcomes them, welcomes them in. Yes. Colorful love that. pillows. Oh, I yes. just love that. That's so cheery right as you walk up. Uh, yep. To your property. Yep. For sure. Um, what else? I think the last thing we kind of talk about with curb appeal is when you're um, having your photos done or you're having your showings and you just park your cars down the street. So you don't have that big car in the front of the house. So you want that. Full picture yeah. We don't want a car in the photo. No, with the license plate, yeah, that's probably yeah, not no, probably not a good idea, right? Yeah, so another episode we could talk about the backyard. <laughs> oh, for sure. Really I had that, but... yeah, I had an awesome backyard a couple of weeks ago, and they it was it was so much fun just because they it was they had a huge deck and just all of this fun stuff that we could play with and move around and you know put a cornhole in the backyard like. Yeah, right. it was fun. This time so, of year, anyway, really great for yeah aging up the outside. We're finally through the well, knock on wood, but say, through the majority that. of the snow, I'm sure we'll still have some, mm, but no we're snow. through most of it. And yeah, we can put the games outside and the you know set up cornhole and a pitcher of tea on the tap back table or whatever. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of showing That's the the Colorado lifestyle that. That's right. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yay. Well, we did we talk I I think we touched on we talked about the colored pots by the front door, right? I think you did. Yeah. Pots That's or plants good. and also a fresh doormat makes all the difference in the world than your old grubby doormat. And I think you mentioned that but we kind of yeah, breezed and, over it. So I just wanted to hundreds. So Yeah. <laughs> Okay, not go to down. really like you know share their advertising but <laughs> yeah no, so. nice I haven't been there in a while I need to go shopping a little bit so curb appeal matters and it that matters a lot because you want to get those buyers in the door and if you don't have great curb appeal right then drive right on past that's right well and it, it's also setting that higher perceived value right from the get-go Yes. Right. They're not having to walk in. And like, if it's yucky outside and they walk in and it's fabulous, they've already kind of had this perceived notion that, oh, maybe it's not going to be so great. And they're not expecting. And then your value has gone down a little bit. Yeah. So beautiful, welcoming curb appeal. Right. Dead then trees, dead grass, you know, weeds, those things just don't say that the home has been well taken care of. That's right. And everybody wants well-maintained. That's, that's a huge selling point for, I mean, that's what buyers want. Yep. Yeah. Very good. All right. Okay. I think we did it. Anything else to add? I think we covered curb appeal. Great. I think so too. All right. Everybody take care of your curb appeal. Make your, the front of your yeah. house look fantastic. Be what? There and enjoy and, and, and start working on your curb appeal. That's Even right. Moving. Right. I, I mean, so many of these things that we talk about, I have people ask me all the time, do you do this kind of stuff for people who are not moving? It's like, well, yeah, I mean, you could stage your house to, to stay, to live and still do all of the same things. So you don't necessarily have to be selling to prepare your home and make it look fantastic. That's right. So yeah. let us know if you need help. Happy yeah, to do. absolutely. All right. all right. Well, thanks, Candice. Thanks, Steph. It was a good episode and was... see y'all next time. See y'all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Stager Savvy, insider secrets to stage your home and sell it for more. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion on home staging and gained valuable insights that you can apply to your own real estate journey. If you have any questions, ideas for future episodes, or would like to learn more about our services, please feel free to visit our website, stagersavvy.com, or reach out to us directly at stagersavvy at gmail.com. We're always here to help. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date on the latest episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. 
Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us and helps us improve our content and reach more people. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.